So I'm going to be uh, running you through this virtual dyno demo. So this is a digital twin of an actual engine test cell. So we have a twin cylinder 350cc engine mounted on the dyno. And uh, this is your engine control. So you can increase the RPM of an engine and you could also change the throttle push. This is your dyno output. So depending on uh, what throttle inputs you give and what RPM it is running at, um, the dyno would show you what is your torque the engine is producing, the power, the fuel flow, air flow, brake thermal efficiency, um, your uh, a very rough indication of your emissions from the engine and also if your engine is knocking. The third portion here is actually your calibration interface. So this is your ECU tuning interface or engine calibration interface. So these tables will typically uh, be present inside your engine control unit. So you can go here and uh, the y-axis here represents your throttle position. So for each engine RPM against the throttle position, you can tell the uh, ECU how much of spark advance to command and uh, the second table this would tell the ECU what is the air fuel ratios that it has to command. So let's start off. Okay, and the third portion is uh, you see a three-dimensional graph of uh, your calibration table. So engine RPM versus throttle, and whatever the values that you have logged in here. So this is kind of it helps you trace the values. Okay, so. Uh, let me just go back and probably run a simple test for you. So now say I need to test my engine at uh, 5000 RPM. So drag the slider and set it at 5000 RPM. So now you can start running a steady state test using these uh, figures here. So right now we are running a steady, test, steady state test at 5000 RPM with the throttle at 10%. Um, engine is producing around 8.69 newton meters of torque and uh, your emission figures are here and there is no knock so this light has not come on so there is no knock your uh, BTE is around 24 percentage so now as I start opening the throttle 20 percent your uh, torque is climbing and air mass is increasing as well it's now 35 gone to 46 torque is climbing so as more air starts going in um, your emissions are also increasing because you're burning more fuel 40 percent throttle and all the way up to full throttle which is 100 percent throttle so um, now at 100 percent throttle at 5000 rpm um, the ecu is commanding close to 12.5 air fuel ratios so now this air fuel ratio and this spark advance, um, this is what you can uh, change using your calibration interface. So now to do that, you need to understand uh, how AFR works. So AFR would decide as a function of your air flow, uh, how much fuel to inject. So now uh, air fuel ratio is the mass of air divided by mass of fuel or mass of fuel the ECU calculates by dividing uh, air mass by your air fuel ratios. So now for 5000 RPM, 100% throttle, let me try changing the AFR. Let me try making it a little bit more leaner. So we have 30 Newton meters and 5 kilogram mass of uh, fuel. This is what we have, 30 and 5. I'm going to go back and change the air fuel ratios. I'm going to make the AFR a little bit more richer. So 5000 RPM and uh, 100% throttle. So this is where I am, 5,000, 100%, 12.5. So now suppose I make this stoichiometric here. I Stoichiometric is 14.7. So now you see it's gone 14.7. And torque was 30, fuel flow was 5. More or less similar, not changing. But let me make it really lean, maybe 20. Still the same. So being a okay, being an area of uh, high volumetric efficiencies, it's probably not causing too much of a difference. But let me try, yeah, okay, now let me try running it at 20 AFR, 
and uh, <clears throat> let me try refreshing the page 30 and 5 yeah that's happened so your torque has dropped because your fuel flow has also dropped so 30 and uh, 5 was there at 12.5 uh, AFR now I'm gonna convert uh, this into 14.7 and uh, <clears throat> run it so 30.76 and fuel flow has come down a little bit so what this means is as you change your air, flu air fuel ratios um, the engine control unit decides how much fuel to inject based on that and uh, the other takeaway for you would also be as you start running it more richer your uh, CO emissions would also go up so now if I were to run it at 12.5 AFR <clears throat> I'm having a very high carbon uh, monoxide emissions, almost 51,000 uh, ppm. Whereas when I start running it at 14.7 uh, AFR, my CO emissions come down as well. So for this reason, if you want your engine uh, to be operating at the best emissions range possible, then you would always try to run it around in or around your stoichiometric ratio so now this is a steady state test you could also go ahead and do a sweep test so sweep test is where you run the engine between a minimum and maximum rpm and you try to find out uh, what is your power output so now let me name it test one and i'm going to do a run from 1000 to 10,000 rpm and i'm going to run it at full throttle now if i click run test i've done a sweep test and uh, I can plot my horsepower. So horsepower, this is my horsepower uh, curve um, based on the kind of uh, changes I've done to my fueling. So now the small uh, bump around 5000, this is probably because uh, <coughs> we've been making some changes to the air fuel ratios. So because there's a small uh, change, I mean bump here. But if you go back and change the calibration parameters, then you would get a different uh, you know, output here. So now I can also run uh, the same test again um, for the same parameters, but let me drop the horsepower. I mean, let me drop the throttle opening. Let me just open it by 50%. So uh, now when I plot my horsepower, so I, you see that my maximum horsepower has gone down by 4 bhp. I'm now only making 20 bhp. Yes, of course, to be expected because I'm only running with 50% throttle. But an interesting thing to note is that uh, during your low mid RPMs, when you have partially closed throttle, uh, you're actually generating a lot more of horsepower here. So this typically happens because uh, the partially open throttle plate uh, is promoting a better swirl and better cylinder filling properties. So it's, it's showing you a slightly higher, uh, you know, horsepower here. Uh, it's exaggerated here because the scale is slightly different, but uh, you can see the, uh, the legend value. So this is 13.5 versus 14.7, so around 1 bhp. It looks like a lot here, but it's just 1 bhp. Um, whereas at the, uh, at the peak, okay, so you have uh, 24 bhp on uh, the test one and uh, you have only 20 bhp on the test too so what 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 exactly is happening is when you have a partially closed throttle uh, it promotes better cylinder filling so during your low mid rpms you gain a little bit of horsepower but at uh, the maximum horsepower area which is at 8000 rpm um, a fully open throttle is giving you 4 bhp more so this is how you would be able to uh, virtually learn about calibration and also about emissions compliance using calibration parameters using our virtual dyno.